Good morning. Thank you for being part of our program today. This morning I want to talk to you about 1 John chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. The first letter of John, the fourth chapter, and verses 4 to 6. Let me read to you. John says, You dear children are from God, and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world, and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. To get the context of this, you have to go back to the beginning of the chapter. And notice in those first three verses that we looked at yesterday morning, John was talking about the spirit of Antichrist. And remember, there are very many different Antichrists. It's true that the Bible speaks of an Antichrist to come, who apparently is an individual. But that's not what John's talking about. He's talking about spirits that are against Christ, and there are many of them. Now he continues with that thought, and notice he says, you have overcome them. Now we as Christians never overcome other people, but we as Christians believers can overcome the enemy. And therefore we can overcome these spirits. And here in verse 4 is the thrust that I think we have to remember. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in them, or he that's in the world. The power of the Lord Jesus is greater than the power of Satan. One of the strange things is this. When somebody comes to ask for prayer, they almost seem to think that Satan's going to get them, and the Lord our God is not going to bless them. And yet, if you read the Word of God, if you study the Bible, you find that is totally false. God just delights in blessing His children. God has said to us, He'll give us the desires of our heart. God continues to say things like that to indicate to every one of us that He is our Heavenly Father who loves us and is just longing to pour out His gifts and blessings into our lives. But there's more than that. He is the power who dwells within us. And because He's the Creator of all things, He is the greatest power in the world today. You have dwelling in you, if you belong to Jesus Christ, the power. The trouble is that most of us as Christian believers have never really tapped into that potential. We've never used what we've got. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. In Jesus Christ you have victory over the devil. Know that. Exercise that. Use the authority you have. Do you remember what Jesus said to his disciples? All authority is given unto me. Now, I believe that because Jesus lives in you, if you're operating in the name of Jesus Christ, if you know him as he is, then you have that same authority available. And there is nothing that Satan can bring against you as a Christian believer, for you have that authority. Exercise it. Use it. Because the one who's in you is greater than the one who's in the world. When I listen to the news, when I read the newspaper, when I see what's going on across this nation and in other nations, all I see is the work of Satan, again and again and again. And isn't it difficult in the news to pick out the good things? They stand out like a sore thumb. All the rest seems to be bad. And it seems that Satan is winning. And I think we just need this reminder. Greater is he that is in you. I think as Christians we should rejoice in this. I think in Christians we should know that we have the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. In very truth, we are overcomers. Let's be overcomers, and let's not it, let it come over us. What about verse 5? John goes on and says, They are from the world, therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. Whichever way you tackle Christianity, know this. The philosophy, the ethics, the morals, of the Christian life are different from the way the world thinks and acts. The sooner we get this clear, the better. Every so often somebody says to me, you know, I am under dreadful attack at work as a Christian. Well, so you should be. And you shouldn't even be surprised. This is almost part of the package. Because of who you are in Jesus Christ, you will get attacked. The world doesn't think the way you think. The world doesn't act the way you act. In fact, if you're acting like the world, I doubt if you're living in Jesus Christ. Remember, very often their values are different. And by the way, I'm speaking in generalization. 
don't get all hyper with me and say, just a minute, Richard, I know someone who's in the world who's this, that, and the other thing, and often better than some Christians. I understand that. I know what you're saying. But in general, the philosophy of the world is totally different. And right now in the United States, it's totally different. For the philosophy of the world just moving across this country is what we call humanism. It is anti-God. And the sooner we get that clear, the better. Some of our politicians, some of them running for president in 84, are humanists. If you're a Christian believer, you should be aware of this. And to put somebody who's an atheist in power is absolutely terrible for this country. Know that. Pray about it. See what the Lord your God is saying. There is a humanistic philosophy that is just running through this country. Particularly it's coming through the education system. It's in our colleges, it's in our universities, it's giving, being given to our teachers, and from the teachers it's coming to our children, and our children are being trained in humanistic philosophy. We need to know that, we need to understand that, we need to pray about it, and where necessary we need to resist it. The strange thing is that humanism moves as a religion in one way, and then it's allowed into our education system in another. If we try to do that with Christianity, you'd hear it from one end of the country to another. The world listens to them. Why? Because they're false spirits and what they're saying fits in with the world. The other thing we find, and this is obvious, the world listens to what it wants to listen to. The world listens to the thing that fits in with its lifestyle. And if what you're saying fits in with its lifestyle, they're going to listen. If you're somebody who stands up against immorality, homosexuality, lesbianism, and many other types of perversion of sex, the world's not going to listen. Because a lot of the world want to do that sort of thing. And they're not going to listen to you. So straight away, the world listens to them, says John. Who? The Antichrist spirits. The false spirits. These are the things that the world listens to. And that's so true of this generation. It's interesting, isn't it? Here we are. We're far more educated, we're far more advanced, we're far more technical, we're far more scientific than any previous generation. And what's happened? We become more and more atheistic. As man advances, he moves away from God, to a very large extent. I'm not suggesting that the whole nation's left the Lord our God, but I am suggesting the majority have. Who's God? Where does he fit in? He's not even considered. And that's why, as you and I as Christians seek to speak in the world, no one listens to us. Which takes me on to verse 6. John says to us, We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever's not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. So John is quite definite here. He says there are two spirits abroad in this situation. There is one that speaks with truth and there's one that speaks with falsehood. Now, if that's true, and that's what the Bible is saying, you know as well as I do, the spirit of truth flows from the Lord our God. Jesus himself says to us, I am truth. Conversely, from the devil comes falsehood. And everything the devil does is false. Everything the devil does is lies. And friend, he's busy. Understand that, recognize that, and come back to verse 4. Having recognized who he is, having recognized the way he operates, know that the power that's in you is greater. Have you got that? Do you understand that? Then straight away you're in business. There's a spirit of truth, there's a spirit of falsehood. John is also saying to us in verse 6, We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us. Now, that means that anyone who's prompted by the Holy Spirit hears what we are saying as against what the world is saying. But it's not always easy. This is true within a preaching context. This is too true within life. In your office, there are certain people who listen to what you say. And if you're really walking in Jesus, there'll be certain people who will come to you for help. It's interesting, you know. If your lifestyle really shines Jesus, and not what you say necessarily, but what you are, when somebody's in problems, when the chips are down, they're going to seek you out. They're going to come to you. They're going to ask for your help. Can you help me with this problem? And son, you say, why on earth are they asking me? Because they know you have answers that they don't. They may not verbalize that. They may not even admit it to themselves. But they know deep within your heart, their heart, that what's in you is real. 
and they want what you've got. They may not want some of the restrictions you've taken into your life, but they want that peace. They want that love. They want the fruit that the Holy Spirit's producing in you if you're attractive in Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. John also says, but whoever's not from God does not listen to us. Well, that's what I've just said to you. Very clearly stated in verse 5. The world is not going to listen to the Christian. First of all, they think we're bonkers. What a lifestyle you have. You have nothing but misery. You've given up all the good things of the world. Of course, that's a lie too. I've had more fun in this world since I knew Jesus Christ. I've had more giggles since I knew Jesus Christ. I don't understand Christians who don't laugh. I just think they miss most of the ball game. I find the Lord my God says that I'm to have joy, and His joy is to be full in me. Well, if that's true, I think Christianity has to be fun. As you stepping out into this world today, know what John is saying. Greater is He that is within you than he that's in the world. You may be facing some very difficult situation. You may have someone in your office who's very difficult to handle. Know, first of all, that the one in you is greater than the one in that person. The second thing is, know that the one in you is love. And let that love flow out to that individual. Because whatever they're doing and whatever they're doing it, they hurt inside. And basically, they don't want to be the way they are. Maybe it's the office manager, bless his old heart. Maybe he's the one who's obnoxious, cantankerous, antagonistic. What do you do when you meet a person like that? I do one thing. I rejoice in the Lord my God that I don't live with him. Can you imagine what it'd be like to be his wife? Bless her old heart. Men like that are obnoxious. What do they need? They need prayer. They need love. They need care. And if you pray enough, you're going to find they begin to change. Why? Because the one in you is greater than the one in them. You've got victory. Live it today.